before I started to work in computer vision, I used to be a civil engineer. So this video is a great opportunity for me to go back as we will be using YOLO V7 segmentation model to detect cracks in concrete. Traditionally, YOLO used to be a strictly object detection model. However, it was very influential in creating architectures like YOLAC that was image segmentation model that brought a lot of architecture design from YOLO itself. This year, YOLO V7 got released and it brought image segmentation and post estimation. Soon after that, YOLO V5 followed the suit. We already have a video about instance segmentation in that library. You can watch it by clicking the tab visible in top right corner right now. Okay, so let's jump into Jupyter Notebook and train YOLO V7 instance segmentation model on custom dataset. As usual, we start at RoboFlow Notebooks, which is the perfect place for you to start learning about computer vision. We add new tutorials almost weekly and we already have everything from classical ResNets to latest transformers. So if you want to learn more, please visit github.com slash RoboFlow slash notebooks. Let's scroll a little bit lower. In models tutorials table, we look for YOLO v7 PyTorch instance segmentation and let's open that in Google Colab. That will of course redirect us. And before we start to do anything, let's just create a copy and save it on our drive. That will open uh, the same notebook in new tab. We can close the previous one and let's increase the font size a little bit. So you would guys have an easier time to follow the tutorials over here. The first thing that we'll do is execute before you start cell, which is basically only an NVIDIA SMI command. It will allow us to confirm that we have access to the accelerated version of the Google Colab with the GPU. For us, it works. We have access to Tesla T4. If you have any problems with that command, most likely you don't have access to the GPU. You can fix that by going to edit, notebook settings, and over here in hardware acceleration, probably Probably you have selected none. That's, I guess, the default value over here. So you can switch it back to GPU and save. I don't need to do it, so I just cancel and we can proceed to installing YOLO v7. The installation itself is pretty simple. We kick off by setting up the home directory and then we install the actual YOLO v7. What is happening over here is, first of all, we clone a YOLO v7 repository. And then we need to switch to different branch. How YOLO v7 handles all of those use cases that they support is they decided not to have all of them in the same code base. They just have different branches that execute different models, which is a little bit weird because if I would like to have at the same time object detection and instance segmentation or post estimation is very hard to have that at the same time. I done that in one of my previous projects and it was a total headache. But regardless, if we open the branches list, we see mask, we see post and all sorts of other stuff that they are currently working on. The main one is object detection. But interestingly, if I scroll over here to instance segmentation and I open the code here and here, those are different branches. One of them is mask, one of them is U7, whatever that means. And judging by the latest comment date over here, it's four months ago, over here is two months ago. I decided to go for U7 and that's the branch that we'll use. I know I need to stop using over here constantly. Sorry for that. I really don't know what's going on over here. So this is why we have this line, git checkout, and we are basically checking out to a specific commit from the U7 branch. The next thing that we will be doing is obviously going into YOLO v7 repository and installing all required Python packages. So let's just do that. What I usually like to do before I even start training in Google Colab is to confirm that everything has installed properly. And there is nothing really better than running the pre-trained model on some example image. Let's first download pre-trained weights for YOLO v7 segmentation model and some example image that is actually coming from my home photo book and just simply run predict script with those weights on that image 
just to confirm that all the piping is configured like it should be. Fun fact, you know, YOLO v7 is actually an official fork of YOLO v5, and apparently they forgot to switch some logs from YOLO v5 to YOLO v7. I guess that's an Easter egg, especially for those who have very definitive opinion about which framework is better. And we can display the results. So here you see me and my dog. Let's just make it a little bit smaller for the time being. What I immediately noticed is the quality of the masks that we get from the model. Not so far ago, I guess a few weeks back, we were testing one of the latest instance and semantic and panoptic segmentation model, which is one former. And the quality of the masks that we were getting from that model compared to YOLO v7 was amazing. The problem over here is that the model was super, super slow. It took like between five and 10 seconds on a GPU to generate those masks. So there is a reason why all those papers dazzle us with those graphs that compare the speed and the accuracy of the models. It is well known fact that smaller models tend to have lower accuracy, but at the same time, return the results faster, which is the primary argument to use them in some specific use cases. If I want to run a real-time application, I cannot afford to wait five to 10 seconds for the inference result to return. I even cannot wait like half a second. I would need to run 10, 20, 25 frames a second to be a real-time application. On the other hand, there are some use cases that are all about accuracy. So if we are talking about segmenting medical images, for example, I don't really care if I run it five seconds or 30 seconds even. I really care about as high accuracy as possible. And this is what we call accuracy versus speed trade-off. And by the way, if you want to take a look at that one former video, I highly encourage you guys to do it. It's really mind blowing the accuracy of that model. You can take a look at it by clicking the card visible in the top right corner right now. Now the time have come to download the data set. Like I said in the intro, we will work on a crack segmentation data set that is available at RoboFlow Universe. But before we start, let's talk about the data format that is required by YOLO v7 segmentation model. It is quite similar to typical YOLO format, but this time we are not working with bounding boxes, but with segmentation polygons. So as usual, we have images and label files. Every image has separate label file and the label files are in TXT format. In our case, the images and annotations are divided into three subdirectories, which is test, a train and validation. And if we scroll a little bit lower, we can see how a single label files look like. As usual with yellow, every row in that TXT file is a separate annotation. And the elements in every row are divided with spaces. The first element in the row is the class ID of the given annotation. So if we have 80 classes like in Coco, those numbers would go from zero to 79. The next elements are basically subsequent points of the polygon. Every point has X and Y coordinates. So that's what we get. Class ID, X and Y of the first point, X and Y of the next point, etc., etc. And the last part of our data set is data YAML file, which is basically a simple file where we define the class names, the total amount of classes and the paths to every subdirectory. So for train, test and validation, that's it. The great thing about using RoboFlow is that you don't need to really care about the structure of a data set. You can basically export it in any popular format. One of those is YOLO v7, and I will show you how to do it in just a second. And by the way, if you want to learn more about different data formats and how they are structured, you can read about it on our formats page, which will be linked in the description below. Enough of the data set theory, let's download it and train our model. First thing that we'll be doing is we need to provide the API key to RoboFlow. We'll be downloading the data set from there. So we need to do that first. So I'm just pressing enter over here. I get the prompt to give the API key. So let's go to RoboFlow. 
sign in. If you don't have account, you need to create it, obviously. Then you go to your account settings, RoboFlow, RoboFlow API and private API key. Let's copy that and go back to our Jupyter Notebook, paste it here, enter, and we are almost ready to go. The second thing that we need to do is provide the information about the data set that we want to use. In our case, it's the crack image data set. So we hit download, select the format. Like I said, we offer different formats, but we are mostly interested in YOLO V7 PyTorch for that tutorial. Click continue. And after just a few seconds, it generates a code snippet for us that we can just copy and paste and be done with that. I'm just copying those two lines because I have the rest of that in my Jupyter notebook. So now I'm going back there and just pasting those two lines here. Press shift enter and the data set should be downloading momentarily. By the way, I just noticed that one of the demos featured at the RoboFlow main page right now is football players tracking, which is one of the recent projects I done. So I absolutely encourage you guys to watch it. It's an awesome video. You will learn how to train a custom YOLO V5 model and how to connect that to Tracker. You can watch it by clicking the link in the description below right now or the tab visible in the top right corner. The only thing that is left to do is run the train script for like 30, 45 minutes. For my tests, it looks like 10 epochs is enough to get a really decent result on that small data set. So that's what we'll be doing. Make coffee, make a tea, chill a little bit, and we will be back soon. So thanks to the magic of cinema, we don't need to wait too long for the results to come. Like I predicted between 30 to 40 minutes for that particular training to be completed. And we can now visualize the predictions of our newly trained model on the validation batch. So similarly as YOLO v5, YOLO v7 saves a lot of information from every experiment. And one of those information is basically an image containing, I guess, 16 images from the validation set along with the prediction. I guess only one image looks a little bit off. The rest of them, I would say the prediction is quite accurate. Maybe if we would train for a little bit longer, the result for that particular image would be a little bit better. But for the sake of tutorial, I'm really happy with the result. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is how to actually use our freshly trained model to predict on images or on videos. This is quite easy because we just use different script to do that. So for the training, we use train PY. So for the evaluation, we use eval PY. And over here, we use predict PY. And what the script does, it is loads the model into the memory, go into the source that can be, for example, in our case, a directory with images and basically run our model on every each of those image and saves the result into another directory. Sounds easy enough, so let's just do it. So it is taking a little bit of time to load the model into memory, but then when it's already loaded, it's just like magic. 32 milliseconds per image. And the actual results are, I think, quite okay. I'm really happy with that small crack being detected. Looks promising. That's all for today. I hope that you liked the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. That really helped the channel to grow and gives me a little bit of motivation to put more effort in the videos. Stay tuned for more computer vision content coming to this channel soon. My name was Peter. See you. Bye.